it's that time of year again. Eggnog stocked in the pantry, chestnuts roasting on an open fire, and a greater sense of togetherness as a family. Christmas was finally descending upon the land of Skyrim, and our hero, Joe Joman, was ready to take a well-deserved break from his quest to become the High King of Skyrim. That is, until he received a certain foreboding letter, a notice on festivities. Due to the increasing levels of violence between the Stormcloaks and the Imperials, the Jarls of Skyrim have called for a halt to any and all festivities until further notice. Citizens are encouraged to move indoors at any sign of conflict. Ulfric Stormcloak, bitter in his defeat at the Battle of Whiterun, was attempting to lash out and cancel Christmas. But this is going to be Joe's first Christmas with a house and a family, and he wasn't about to let that be ruined by Ulfric so easily. To save Christmas, he was going to need to harness the power of holiday cheer and spread it throughout the land. This was a job for Joe Joe Ho Ho Real quick, I gotta hop in here to remind you to subscribe and follow the Twitch where we record these live. Also, I want to thank all of you that have done so already. This channel's growth has been a better present to me than anything I could find under a Christmas tree, and I really do mean that. Alright, back to Jolly St. Joe. Our first seasonal scheme was to give gifts to all of our closest friends and family, starting with Miko, who I'd say earned one the most. I think I know exactly what Miko would like. Miko, I bought this horker loaf just for you. Eat up, buddy. <laughs> it's all yours. Our next recipient was a friend quite dear, a skilled archer with pointed ears. Feindal, well, what would Feindal like? That's within our budget of 160 gold. <laughs> Arrows? Yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea. We're at the Fletcher's in this city, isn't he? Yeah, I bet he would. I bet if we got him some elven arrows, he'd be very happy. I, I never come in here. Oh. I didn't touch that, I swear. Oh, <laughs> there's one elven arrow. He could have some dwarven arrows. They they kind of look the same. They're like shiny and gold. Thandal? <laughs> Why is he looking at me like that? These are for you. Oh wait, I had more elven arrows already. 30 dwarven arrows and 9 elven arrows just for you. Let's get going then. Yeah, let's get going. We need to get something for Mule and Lucia still. I want to see what the blacksmith has here. A dwarven greatsword. A dwarven warhammer. Okay, that's too expensive. Hmm. You know what? It's not always about the monetary value of a gift. Sometimes it's the heart that you put into it. Sir, I need your finest lumps of metal. Thank you. An iron warhammer for Mule. And an iron dagger for Lucia. Actually, you know what? I just thought of something. We haven't used this, like, at all since we found it. But Miko is holding on to a, uh... Yeah, an iron sword of binding. You know what I bet Lucia would like even more than a, a homemade iron dagger? A homemade iron dagger that has the soul of a, a creature we slayed trapped inside of it. Good day, sir. Hard at work, I see. I respect a man who works all day at the lumber mill. That was me once upon a time. Here, sir. Have a ruby. Uh, there you go. He looks very appreciative. After sticking our soul sword in the biggest crab we could find, we enchanted the dagger with 1,000 uses of shock damage. We gotta give this legendary artifact a name, of course. <laughs> Love thy father. I like that. <laughs> so she'll remember always who saved her from the streets. Finally, it was time to present to our wife, who needed a gift to mend our past strife. Do you need anything, my love? Has the store made any money? Of course, I have to extort my wife for 300 gold before I give her a Christmas present. Uh, I shed blood, sweat, and tears making this. I I got a boo-boo on my thumb. All for you. Oh. Smooth. 
Merry Christmas, Mule. Next, I sought for my daughter's heart to deepen, an offering I brought to appease the demons. Here you go, Lucia. I made you this dagger. It electrocutes people. I'm sure you'll love it. Thanks. Oh, I heard, I heard it crackle as she pulled it out. Look at her go. My little ray of sunshine. <laughs> Lydia, I'll come back for you. She alone has been raising my daughter, and yet somehow I still forgot her. Uh... Alright, uh, she probably won't notice if I just give her this, right? Lydia! I thought really long and hard about this. I got you a present. It's raw meat and bread, so you can cook my family dinner tonight. Merry Christmas! Now that all of our friends had been filled with holiday cheer, it was time to bring presents to the good little boys and girls of Skyrim. Unfortunately, we couldn't go to the orphanage because we had a 10,000 gold downy in Riften. But, there were rumors of one other orphan in need of some Christmas spirit. Sweet mother, sweet mother, send your child unto me, for the sins of the unworthy must be baptized in blood and fear. I hear somebody who's in need of some Christmas spirit. A poor young boy who's been alone for a while needs a gift that'll bring back his smile. Did someone order a Christmas cheer? Send your child unto me, for the sins of the unworthy must be baptized in blood and fear. I, I get why no one comes in here now. Now you're here, and you could kill grow up the kind! L listen, kid. I didn't, I didn't come here to add more murder charges to my rap sheet. My mother, she, she died. I, I'm all alone now. You're kind of lonely here. Well, you know what? I actually have the perfect idea for a, a, a present for a kid like him. Now you really gotta think. What would a lonely teenager who's locked in his room all day want? He's not a teenager, he's literally five. Hey, you know what? I don't make assumptions. Now the clear answer in my mind is a statue of Debella. So we made our way to Markarth, and after convincing a locked door to open by asking nicely, borrowed a statue from the Temple of Debella. Oh, book it, book it. She was coming. Smooth. <laughs> Before heading back, we stopped at the inn for a drink. See? You have a nice bottle of wine, Joe. And some Nord mead for the good people of the of the inn. No ship. Merry Christmas! Sure you heard any rumors lately? Brother Varalis isn't the most popular man in town right now. Brother Valarius isn't the most popular man in town. He might need some Christmas spirit himself. Oh, here he is. Brother Varulius was feeling down about his work, so in the name of Christmas, we offered to help him out. Not many would walk blindly into a crypt smelling of steel and blood, but not a few. Hello? You're the ghost of Christmas past? I feel the hunger inside of you. Oh. She has a place for us where we can sate our appetites without judgment. A place where you're sating your appetites? You're telling me there's a Christmas dinner? Meet me there. Ah. Oh. Well, who am I to turn down an invitation to a family Christmas? After all, uh, <laughs> what's a holiday without a family gathering? Ah, Merry Revelers. <laughs> I can see the holiday spirit is alive and well but with this crowd. Come, share a bottle of hunting brew mead with me. Well, don't mind if I do. I would love to share a drink with you, friend. Cheers. I'll play you a little ditty. Oh, come on. Don't <laughs> You're leaving just like that? I thought we were having a good time. Oh, this guy knows what's up. I believe the address points towards up here. This is an awfully odd spot to have a 
Christmas dinner at, though. I was expecting, like, a manor. I hope this bear wasn't one of the dinner guests. <laughs> it's just, they live in a bad neighborhood. Yeah, I shouldn't judge. This is kind of nice. Hello, ma'am. So pleased that you invited me to your special occasion. Your, uh, your place is very homely. I was hoping you would say that. Kind of odd that there's hostile forces inside your own home. I'm starting to think this might not be a normal Christmas dinner. Maybe these are just the uh, the rowdy aunts and uncles. These are the ones that are causing arguments at the dinner table. Ooh, uh, that's just that's just Uncle Mike. You know what? This this looks kind of nice actually. You know, once you get past the abrasive relatives, things look a lot nicer. It's an awfully dangerous house. I know I'm not one to judge with all the family problems that Joe has had, but seems like a difficult family. They're coming out of the walls. Oh, he was just getting up to go get <laughs> go to the bathroom or something. He just took off. Oh, is this the dinner table? Oh! I realized I was dying too late. I tried to <laughs> catch it with the health pot. Wake up, dinner's ready. Really? <laughs> Just kidding. This must be Grandpa. This is the family patriarch. Lovely. Well, hey, you're welcome. I dealt with all your in-laws. Before we could dig in, however, Eola requested that we go retrieve Verulius, who we found out is her sibling because she calls him Brother, Brother Verulus. Yeah, usually mistletoe is like the plant, not usually a massive spike hanging from the ceiling. Well, you know, I'm not one to judge others' traditions. I'm a guest in their home. I'm here to simply absorb the culture and enjoy the holidays. Oh. Uh. Hello, ma'am. Are you in need of some Christmas spirit? Here you go. Thank you. Here, this is for you. Ah, uh, it's my pleasure, ma'am. Merry Christmas. Brother Verulius, your presence is requested at your family Christmas dinner. Does he sleep in the crypt? Are we gonna find him in the in the dank, dirty dungeon? This must just be how their whole family is. They all prefer living in dark caves. It's clear they're related, at least. Brother Verulius, you'll be late for dinner if you don't come with me. My duties keep me busy in Markarth. Come on, you can take a small break from work just to, uh, just to have a one evening with the family. It won't kill you. I suppose I can come with you for a short venture. Prayer check. Kinnereth, do you see my efforts of spreading cheer? <laughs> she still rejects us. That's okay. We'll make amends soon. Um, I didn't bring a horse for you, Verulius, so I hope you're okay with jogging. Maybe Feindal will carry you. He is Santa's little helper, after all. He's an elf. Quickly, brother. Don't worry, I've already spoken to all the in-laws. They've left. Ah, oh, I see the rest of the family is gathered for dinner. How lovely. I need to lay down. I'll just be a minute. Oh, well, no problem. We'll save some for you. What are we having for dinner anyways? Um. Uh-oh. Brother Verulius. <laughs> You're sleeping under the mistletoe. You know what that means. After snatching a kiss from Verulius under the mistletoe, Eola revealed that she had a present for us. Thank you for giving me this this ring, imbued with the Christmas spirit. I'll be sure to cherish it. Now that we're done with Christmas dinner, we need to go deliver our present to Aventus. Unfortunately, at this point, we realized that the statue we got him was a quest item and couldn't be dropped. That meant we were going to have to get him something else for Christmas. Left with no options, we hopped on a carriage to Riften, headed for the orphanage. How are we going to pay our 10k bounty? Well, let me show you. It's really quite simple, actually. I've been looking for you. Oh, courier. Shh. Something about an inheritance. Oh my god, somebody's died? This is horrible news. Who passed? In the name of Jarl Igmund, it is with great regret that we inform you of Brother Verulius' death. Oh my god. Brother Verulius just died? I was just having dinner with him last night. Oh, this is horrible. And with that completely unexpected news, we turned ourselves in. By order of the yarn, stop right there. After all, nothing says Christmas like three consecutive life sentences. 
But, after explaining to the guards that Aaron totally deserved it, they reduced our sentence to a single night. Thanks, Skyrim. Before heading to the orphanage, we made a quick gift run to the general store. What about some books? Let's get, a, get him some books. A horker attacks. I'm sure kids love horker attacks. Rains bestiary, hag ravens. Oh, my sweet Moira. My first love. The Wabajack, that's a good children's book. And a dream of Sovngarde, sure. <laughs> Raise zombie. Raise zombie to bring their parents back? Oh no. <laughs> With our bag full of toys, we crept down the orphanage chimney. Those who shirk their duties will get an extra beating. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes Gorilla. Hello, children. One more thing. I will hear no more talk of adoptions. None of you riffraff is getting adopted, ever. That's not very Christmassy of you. That, my darlings, is why you're here. Why you will always be here. Until the day you come of age and get thrown into that wide, horrible world. Ma'am, you seem to be severely lacking in holiday spirit. Now scurry off, my little gutter snipes. Hmm. I'm sensing a strong lack of holiday spirit in this building. Please, mister. You've got to get me out of here. Well, don't worry, child. I've brought presents. Here. If you don't like your current life, dream about Sovngarde. Merry Christmas. Francois Beaufort. Oh, this guy has an awesome name. You get to learn about hag ravens. Be careful, kid. If you find a, a lovely hag raven someday, make sure you take good care of her. You get the horker attacks. And Runa Fairshield. You look like you could use a Waba Jack book. I'll leave a raised zombie spell tome over here on the table. Just in case any anybody will wants to, you know, experiment. That's awesome. Miko, play with the kids. I need to do some holiday cheer business over in this room. Hello, Grelod. What do you want? You have no business being in here. Oh, I do have business being here, actually. I've come to fill you with holiday cheer, ma'am. Merry Christmas! Let this be a lesson, Ulfric. You can't ever stop Christmas spirit. 